few years ago, I was sitting where you guys are sitting, and I was, ve I was not very confident that I could do this. I was working at the grocery store, um, and a lot of people at the grocery store told me, don't quit because what you're going to go do is a scam. It sounds like a scam. And they were waiting for me to go back and get my job back. And that was a big motivator for me to not to, st to work extra, so I never had to go do that. Um, and, and I'm sharing that because w where I was, I never would have imagined even talking to you guys, and we were just doing the math backstage. Our agency, so a few years ago, <clears throat> I was calling Sean telling him that <clears throat> people were no-showing me and I was thinking, of, you know, maybe this isn't for me. And he goes, dude, people, people are dying of cancer right now, and you're complaining because somebody no-showed you. He's like, and he gave me his favorite line, have some respect for yourself. And I'm like, that's actually a pretty good point. I'm like, I'm calling people. I got the AC on, I got food, I got my health, I got my family. What am I doing? I'll just, I'll just keep calling people. So I started to invest in leads. And it was really hard for me because I didn't want to spend any money. And I was confused because I was looking at this like a job and not my own business. And, and just to go back on that, so our agency, I went from Sean telling me that and me about to quit, and our agency, which is a lot of amazing people, did, uh, helped over 250,000 people last year alone with life insurance. So think about how crazy that is. And that's not from talent. That is from doing the same thing not quitting, continuing to learn. But I didn't want to invest in leads. And I mentioned this earlier, I, I had felt like a stalker calling people. And finally I go, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on auto order for leads. And part of my commissions, I'm not gonna go spend that money. I'm going to reinvest it in more leads. So I had more people to talk to. And everyone would make fun of me. They're like, dude, you suck at closing because you only close 25%. And I would just get the laydowns. Like if somebody told me no, I would just say okay. I'd be like, okay, I'll call someone else. Um, but I started to get good. I started to get better. I started calling people having fun. Like I would call people and go, hey, Mary, uh, this is Andrew. Just so you know, if, if we do a Zoom or if, I, if I'm going to come, come over, just so you know, I look like Brad Pitt when you see me. And they'd be like, what? And I would, they would actually show up to the appointment. The, the ratio of people showing up went way up. <laughs> but so, so I started to get good over time. We did the math. So check this out. This is crazy. I did 10,000 appointments. So it's like, dude, that's every, I don't care if I was going on vacation, I was, I was gonna run. I was gonna run my appointments. I would move my schedule. I would work Sunday. I would work Saturday night. Whatever it takes. And now, if you live in on the West Coast, you could work the East Coast at 5 a.m. You could work Hawaii until midnight. So I'm like, dude, I'm getting my presentations in no matter what, and I'm gonna reinvest that money. There was a few times early on where I was about to go out of business. And I didn't want to talk to people I knew, which is the craziest thing. And what's funny is my Uncle Jimmy's here. He, he's an agent now. One of the guys I recruited showed up to his house from a lead. Think about how messed up that is. And he lives two miles away from me, and he's my uncle. And he called me, he's like, is this guy legit at my house from this lead I filled out? <laughs> it was crazy. But what? What I did is I started calling people I knew when I was new. And I'm like, that's a lead. I, I could help them. And there was a, a, one of my mom's friends bought a policy and it kept me in business. But I was like, I was almost not gonna make it. So I kept going. And when I had quit the grocery store, somebody gave me a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I read it. And I loved it. It was like, don't get stuck in the rat race. 
Don't buy a bunch of nice stuff just so you have to work more. Buy an asset that will buy the nice stuff and that way you're free. You're not stuck in the rat race. So what I did is I'm like, okay, if I recruit an agent and, and it took me a year to find one person, okay? And I spent money on it. So let's say I, I, I invested in recruiting. If I found one agent per year and I spent $1,000 per month on ads, uh, Instagram posts, whatever, we still can, we still hire people on Craigslist, which is crazy. Like, yeah, you still can. But if I invested that money, so check this out. And, and, and if you're here, write this down, okay? I calculated that on average, if I found one good agent per year, that the estimated cash flow for me would be more than a paid off real estate property. So I'm like, yo, we have the best deal. We have higher commission than anywhere. We got events like this. We got renewals. We got leads. We have an incredible leadership team. Everybody helping people. Like, why don't I, why don't I spend all that time and energy investing in this? And, and, and then that's when it really, like, the light bulb went off. And I'm like, dude, this, and what's crazy is how many people we could help, how many licensed agents, like 2.5 million or whatever it is, 3 million. And the people that are not licensed, this is still a ground floor opportunity. And then there's a lot of other ways that you can create leads. And I just want to share this to give you guys a little idea. My Uncle Jimmy comes over all the time and makes salsa and it's, it's really good. It's addicting. So I'm like, every time football's on, he lives down the street, he comes over, makes his salsa, and I'm like, dude, we should get this made, like mass produce this. And he's like, who's gonna buy it? I'm like, I don't know, but let's get a bunch of it. So we got uh, 4,000 jars of salsa that nobody's bought, but it is really good, okay? So I'm like, dude, let's, put our, let's go to the farmer's market and let's teach my kids how to sell stuff. And I'm like, that'd be fun, right? And then, and then we're like, dude, let's put the ethos link on the label. So as people are with their families eating salsa, it says on there, buy a policy without talking to anyone from Uncle Jimmy, scan the QR code. And I'm like, yo, we're gonna sell a ton. And now I'm gonna go back to the grocery store that I left and try to get them to put Uncle Jimmy's salsa on the shelves with his QR code. So anyways, thank you guys.